if you if you notice, uh, if you ever watch Chris Sharma climbing, um, he has a very distinctive style with the little finger always open, even in during a full crimp. Uh huh. That always struck me as as kind of interesting, and uh, <laughs> like wa- watching him climb and comparing uh, his grip to 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 other climbers, it always made me think of that issue of finger length and how it plays into. Um, you know what grip feels comfortable at baseline but i also wonder if there's some aspect of like maybe some people will respond slightly better to training one grip type or another back in my own climbing history uh, i used to feel much stronger on full crimp and extremely weak on on open hand myself Mm -hmm. um and so that just pushed me more in the direction of relying on that grip type for everything and and at that time i would have um, felt oh yes uh, training with the, the the half crimp grip on like a 45 board or the canvas board or fingerboard where it, it feels quite natural especially if you're on one hand to have a half crimp grip with the thumb off and that that feels quite good that that had great utility in, in training um, but what really uh, got me started using the three finger drag a lot more often was just having pulley injuries Mm. So while I was recovering from those, I used three finger drag a lot, um, and I found that after a few months, I started to favour it more and more. And it just ever since it, I, I, I've liked it more and more, and felt that it's a really good grip. It has a couple of other advantages, especially that it gives you a little bit more reach. Huh. <laughs> right. You know. Sure. So uh, as you as you catch a hold at, at the limit of your stretch. If you catch it three finger drag, then you just have that little bit more reach, which does make a difference. Um, and often you don't need to adjust; you can just catch the hold and and, and pull on it. Mm. Um, I just find that it feels quite relaxing. I also just find that um, if I do training on the fingerboard with all three grip types, I find that my three finger drag tends to just respond more. Interesting. I just seem to get better gains on it. So I was slightly wary of feeling like you, you you don't get on well with that grip. It might just be lack of lack of exposure to it. And you've got a bit of a hard road to go to get up to a level where you start to use it more. And then once you use it more, then you feel good on it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that would be my first option. But I certainly wouldn't exclude the possibility that you just might not be able to respond very well on that grip and that you may always get more mileage response to training out of the other grips. Hmm. Yeah, But broadly, I still okay. think the first option is to tr- at least try to have a fairly even strength between the, the different grip types. Okay. Um, but I, I'm, I'm not afraid of, of either using or training that three finger drag. I like it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Um, this is my final question about fingerboard. Mm-hmm. You mentioned that during that six months, or, or rather 18 months, you just had a single campus rung, like a 20 mil edge that you were doing all your training yeah. on. Yeah, yeah. And I know right. that uh, that you put out your own fingerboard, and it's it's really mm-hmm. nice, and it's really simple. It's basically just, it's almost like three different sizes of campus rungs stacked on each other. Um, yeah. What are your thoughts on... I guess I have two questions in one. What are your thoughts on training different sizes versus just sticking to something basic like a 20 mil edge? And then mm-hmm. this is actually a listener question. Uh, Cherise was wondering why your board feature features a 15 mil and a 21 mil instead of the more common like 10 and 20 mil edges that we see out there. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll tackling the last question first. Um, we, we just, I mean, I've, I've hung off a lot of fingerboards <laughs> and tried a lot of different ones. And um, I always found that, that that edge that I that I used, that campus rung that I used, which you can't buy anymore, um, when I started fingerboarding, I really liked that size. It just felt really comfortable to hold. Um, and so we just modeled the middle rung of that. And it just so happened that it ended up being 21 mil. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so... I don't think there's nothing special about either 20 mil or 21 mil. <laughs> it's, you know, why would there be? It just it just feels like a nice size. Uh-huh. Certainly for my for my hands, I guess obviously people with different size hands 
you know, maybe they would f- if someone had a slightly smaller hand, then maybe 20 mil would feel feel nice. But it was about feel. I, I just think that that's that's an important aspect. Is it it should be it should be comfortable and not nasty to hold if possible. Mm. Um, so that's that's where the sizing came. It was just like trying different prototypes and going, oh yeah, that that feels better. That feels better. Or that's the nicest size. We'll stick with that. So there wasn't any kind of like. We want it to be 21 mil for any particular reason, other mm. than just it feels nice. <laughs> um, and then the different sizes, how, you know, I guess I think your first question was about like what's the, the rationale for using those different sizes of rungs. I mean, I think that sort of roughly either side of 20 mil middle rung is a, is a great size because it's big enough that it doesn't hurt your skin, um, but it's small enough that it's still fingery. So, for no other reason than for that, that tends to be why I use it. Um, but any fingerboard is going to be used by people who are at vastly different levels of strength. And one of the biggest challenges is matching the difficulty of the hang to your ability. And, you know, obviously we all do different tweaks of like hanging weight from us, taking weight off, using two hands, using one arm. And having different options for size is just about having convenient options to find that right nice level. And there probably is something to being used to hanging on a small edge as well. That that probably is that there probably is something to that, like in a neuromuscular sense, just being used to the uh, the feeling of a very small edge. I mean, there's slight differences in in how the rest of the muscles of the forearm are going to be activated depending on the angle of your wrist, you know, if you're holding a, a holder different size. So it probably mm-hmm. does make sense to have a bit of variety there. Okay. I was going to ask that. Do you ever do any hanging on very small holds, like 10 mil or below? Do you find those, do you find that helpful at all in specific context? Um, I actually don't. Um, maybe that would be, that would be beneficial. I don't know. Maybe that's some a future experiment I could I could try, but okay. I, I I don't so far. But a lot of the bouldering I do is on very crimpy terrain, mm. like just the rock types that we tend to have in mm. here in Scotland. Mm-hmm. They tend to lend themselves where I do pull on a lot of those holds, but they're all on boulder problems. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so my approach has generally been like, well, yeah, I do I sort of do do that anyway, but just in in my real climbing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So perhaps, perhaps that's that's good. Uh, perhaps not. I mean, in the ideal sense, uh, you know, world, I would um, run a study and find out. <laughs> <laughs>